on, I'm back. Um, yes, another long break. That stuff going on with my stomach hung on for a lot longer than I thought it would. Uh, but I'm feeling a million times better. And I'm going to do some color mixing today, and then I will do a piece. I plan on doing a few videos this weekend, crossing fingers. Um, but first I'm going to talk about resin art. Um, some people have not seen the beginning videos. Resin art is actually a dry paint. It comes in what looks like a beautiful sparkly pigment, but there are actually dry pigments that people use to make paint. So don't be fooled by these. These actually have solvent color. That means color that can be mixed in nail polish or resin. You could not mix this in anything water soluble like acrylic because it will make gumballs. This is actually a dry paint. This is not just a mica pigment. Um, I have about six ounces of art resin mixed up. That's what I happen to have on hand. Um, I had to warm it up a little bit because the weather is getting colder. I'm going to use a little bit of uh, the Stone Coat Black for some effects today. We do have a, co a code with Stone Coat. If you go to Stone Coat Countertops, uh, com and you're interested in playing with their black or white base, if you type in R-E-Z-I-N as the code, you will get $30 off an $80 order. Now, I'm only going to get a drop or two on the end of the spoon. I do not, don't have any in the cradle. I didn't lift any up. Just a drop off the spoon, and that's it. That's all that's going in the cup. I do not use the stone coat to actually make stuff black. Believe it or not, I'll go over other areas that are usually already spray painted back black or painted with acrylic paint. The purpose of the stone coat is for these amazing effects that it makes and lacing and cells that you get. But if you use too much of the stone coat black base tint, there's too much in there, it'll gobble up your color like Pac-Man. So you just want to use a tiny bit for effects. I'm also going to use some white from a company called Alumalite. I really like how this stuff works. The stone coat, you put the color over the top of it in a swipe. The Illuminite can actually be blown over or swiped over the color for effects, like you do in acrylic paint pouring. They're very different products, but they're just going to be a background for my color test here. I put a few drops of the white in. I'm using little, uh, these are taster spoons you can get at the restaurant supply. I've got a little cup of these here. They hold approximately an eighth of a teaspoon. I love these little spoons. They're handy to have on the table um, for measuring. Uh, basic recipe for the resin art is one eighth of a teaspoon per ounce. These little guys are an eighth of a teaspoon flattened out. So if I wanted to have half of it, I would literally have half of this spoon. And we are going to do that kind of mixing today. So I want to make sure I got some black mix. And this is more of just a, a smoky tint. I wish I could show this to you on a side angle on the camera. But it's almost transparent. It's just a smoky tint. And it's just to give us the effect. Okay. So we have a couple dark colors in our line. And we recently introduced the Blingets. Um, that's an artist material pigment. Your interferences, your iron oxides. Iron oxide colors are like copper, bronze, gold. Um, we have the interferences, which is a different category of mica. And interference can be used to lighten something without actually, it will change the value by lightening it. Value means you're going to take it from a lighter, darker to a lighter color. You're changing the value. I know value it makes me think of peanuts and Lucy going wah, wah, wah. You know, simply you're lightening the color, okay? So um, I've got some interference blue, violet. The bling it blue and the bling it violet the interference is ultra-fine particulate, looks like white face powder. I, don't, I can't really put some on my wrist here, I don't think I've got gloves on already. But you can see the color of the skin through the mica. Okay, very, very subtle satin. The sparkles 
are large particulates, which are like adding glitter, which you'll see me play with. It's almost like adding glitter, but it's a form of mica. It's the sister to the interference. It's just a bigger, more sparkly, luxurious flake. Okay. So I'm looking for my interferences here. I need, I need my interference gold too, because we're going to play with some browns. Okay. So as far as uh, the tests, we're going to work on some 6x6 six six tiles. I like these little tiles. You can get them at Home Depot. Uh, it's like it's a flat surface. You don't have to worry about uh, prepping or preparing or putting gesso on. You can get 50 of them to a case for approximately uh, $20. Uh, so I mentioned some darker colors in the line. We just introduced a new color called Mermaid which is the counterpart to our color Blue Moon. Blue Moon would be like a dark ultramarine or the color of an ink pen, dark ink pen blue. Mermaid would be a dark blue teal. Uh, we have not made the green teal yet, but the darkest green teal we can make, but that might be coming. But we can actually add some interference green to the mermaid and it will kind of change how the color shifts, which is this whole secret of color shifting. Okay, I have these little itty bitty three quarter ounce souffle cups. They don't hold very much, which means I don't even need a whole spoon to fill the whole thing up. But we're going to do some color tests here so you can see the difference. I'm going to fill these up halfway. So technically, what's half of three quarters? Yeah. I do this when I'm testing colors for the lab to see if it's something we want to put in the line. Okay. So the mermaid, I'm going to start with a mermaid. And the mermaid, straight into this, I'll put, I don't want to risk dumping it over, I like having this up here. I'm going to put a whole spoonful in here. I'm not sure how much this camera is going to pick this up. And I'm going to basically take half of it and push it off. So I've got approximately half of what would go into the ounce in there. Okay. Now, I want to lighten this by taking interference blue mica, which is the Blingit interference satin, and if I do equal parts, it'll lighten it slightly. So now I have a half a teaspoon of this, a half of, not a teaspoon, half of this little serving spoon, which technically would be if it's an eighth of a teaspoon, it's a sixteenth of a teaspoon. And I'm going to put the same amount that I put in this cup here. Yes, it's going to probably be double the saturation. Mean for the resin, meaning anyway. A little more intense. To kind of offset that, I can add a little bit more resin to this cup. Because these are only three quarters ounces. Okay, and then if I want it really, really, really light. Okay. Oh no, let's do something even more fun than that. Let's actually see what happens if we mix it with interference green. This is the beautiful thing about playing with the artist micas. Everybody should have these in their toolbox. Okay. And I'm going to really, wow, that jar is pretty darn full. Okay, I'm going to even go a lighter value. Value meaning I'm lightening the shade one more step. This is a half scoop to a half scoop of the mermaid. I'm going to go with a full scoop of the interference green to the mermaid. And the same amount of mermaid, about a half of the scoop. Okay. Put 
this mermaid put away. Yeah, these are not even quite half full. And I put in quite a bit. I'm going to add just a tiny bit more resin to this one. Each one of them deserves just a bit more resin to them. We want to be fair to the color because I want to be as close as the what you guys would be doing if you were trying to do an ounce or per ounce, how we would want to mix it per ounce. Okay, I have these little itty bitty coffee stirs that I use for these tiny little cups. They're really thin. You can break them right in half. And they're perfect for mixing them up. Let's see how close we can get on the camera on us mixing these. Now you can lighten any color with the color of mica that's in the description. We might say it's a red plum is a red and a red mica. Okay, so therefore you could lighten it with red or red to gold would be something. So this is the mermaid. Yeah, the camera is kind of picking it up as a blue, but it really is a blue turquoise. I know we went through this in the last video. At an angle, you can see the turquoise. Okay. Let's see what happens when we do equal portions of half of scoop. Now, the regular mica is not preconditioned. It's, it's designed so you can put it in water soluble like acrylics or you can put it in the resin. So you need to stir any colors you're making with the bling at artist micas. But look at what happens, how drastically that color changes. Okay. Now let's see what happens when we do it with the green. Now I added a full one eighth to only a half of the mermaid. Let's get these out of the way so in case that poofs. I'm stirring it very slowly because yes, the mic is on top. You can risk the mic of poofing. But look what's happening. You can even see on this camera, green usually shoots blue, blue shoots green, but look what's going on. That interference green just turned that into a beautiful teal green. All from one jar of mermaid, some of the interference blue, and some of the interference green, which I think I put back over here already. So mermaid's given me these three values. Well, let's see what happens when we do our tile test. Yes, that's a lot of resin for one tile. I need little itty bitty six by six canvases, I think, or little tiny mason boards that are size, that size, so I can do little board tests. Something we can give away. Tiles are kind of hard to ship in the mail to people. Okay, God, I like these three colors. This came out really pretty. Very versatile to see all the different shades that you can get out of just the one with your interferences. So let's see what they look like. I am going to lubricate the tile with a little bit of clear. So let me put the more green version. This was two parts interference green, one part mermaid, down one side. I forgot to warm it, so let's take a moment to just kind of warm all of it. The weather's kind of changed here. Then I'm going to I was going to put the dark in between, but I want you to really see the difference of mixing it just with the interference blue versus the interference green. Look at what happens to the color. Look how different they are. You can custom mix your own colors with the resin art line. That's one beautiful thing about this product. 
And then, of course, this is full strength of the mermaid. Definitely something we can all see a big difference in. Same issue as last time, though, when you're working with teals, they shoot blue. But when you get this at home and you see how gorgeous and dark that blue teal is, and it is a turquoise, and then a lighter shade of that same blue turquoise. But then what happens when I put green in it, the versatility is amazing. So let's, uh, I'm just going to dribble some of this stone coat over the edge just for some effects. This is not untypical of me if anybody's seen me do this before. And then, uh, sorry, didn't mean to be out of screen there. And then some of the Luminite White, just to see how it works. This feels a little bit strong, like it needs more resin in it. When you're mixing your colors, if it looks too intense, you can always add a little more resin to it. So. Darn if I didn't mix up a gold, which is not like me at all, but... Now, I want to swipe, and the trick with swiping is you never want to get the resin too hot, and if you're, you just want it warm. And if you're on tile, be mindful of the fact that tile is glass, and it'll heat up even faster than a regular surface. So, trying to get some swipe papers done here. I think I'm going to swipe into the color because the Illuminite can go over the color. I'm making sure that each one end of this paper is completely tapped down. It's made full contact. almost dragging too much, like maybe I didn't get it hot enough. I'm going to just scrape off what's left on here. It's okay, because I can blow that around. I'm liking this lacing that's happening here, and I see my camera, the light is kind of fighting with that one corner, but I'm liking what's happening with that color, lacing over the top of the stone coat. So maybe what I should do is take, I'm gonna see how this works, just a little bit of this, make full contact with that lighter value of mermaid and swipe it over that black. I don't like that I lost some of it, but... The Illuminite gives you much more subtle lacing. You can see up here in this corner, this is what the Illuminite does blowing over the resin. And then on this side, you can see what happens when you're blowing the color over the stone coat, the lacing that you're getting. So I like those colors a lot. See if I can make something to go with them in a little piece. Um, I wanted to explore Blue Moon, but right now I think a nice, beautiful, warm brown would go gorgeous with these turquoises and 
if memory serves me, Sharon Lindley, shout out to Sharon Lindley. She has a wonderful YouTube channel, Vivid Days. If you've not seen her, go see her. She just recently did a jellyfish challenge with Miriam's Nature, another fantastic YouTube artist. I recommend you go see Miriam is spelt with an M-Y, Miriam. And Sharon Lindley is L-I-N, D is in David, L-E-Y. But she was, um, she had gotten a few colors and was struggling, not struggling, but really wanted a brown. And the only color she had was our spiced ginger, which is really, believe it or not, an antique yellow. It's a, uh, it looks like yellow that's been burnt by the sun. And it's got a, um, an orange, sort of an orange tint to it. It's what's called spiced ginger. Similar to ginger peach in a regular line. Sorry, I'm changing my gloves here. Similar to the ginger peach in the regular line. And yet if you thin down either one of them, there is so much yellow in there. It's crazy. I use it a lot to lighten things or add yellow to something that I need a little yellow with. So uh, in honor of Sharon's questions about how does she get a brown, we're going to play with golden autumn, spiced ginger, some red plum, and believe it or not, Belize Blue. So, Golden Bottom is our base brown. Uh, if I had to say what range it was and whether it's more yellow or more blue, blue means that more it's more taupe or burnt umber, darker, uh, warm would be more orange, more orange, almost like a burnt autumn leaf, okay? This one's in the middle where it's kind of a reddish tint. It's kind of in the middle of the road with a slightly reddish tint. So it can be mixed into various color combinations that uh, we might need. So we're going to do another test with some more colors. And I think I'm going to put, actually normally I, normally I put the resin on first. I will put the resin in first. I just want to be really careful not to run out of resin because I want to mix quite a few colors out of this little baby batch. You will not believe the differences that we get. I'm going to end up needing four cups because you need to see what Golden Autumn looks like straight out of the jar as it is. Same thing, I'm going to get my spoon Okay, now I'm going to start with basically a half scoop. Oh, I really want you guys to see a close-up on this. I don't want to dump it in there, but this spoon, shoot, how do I get this on where you guys can see it? This spoon flattened out is an eighth of a teaspoon. Then I'm going to scoot out enough for literally, I've got about a half of it. And you don't have to be science set scientific about it, but I want to give you a general idea of what I'm doing. I recommend you keep a log of the first few batches that you do, because if you make a color you absolutely love and you didn't log what you did, you're going to hate yourself. The first few months of paint pouring that I did, acrylic paint pouring, one of the most important things I learned was to log everything. And of course, I was experimenting as someone who actually makes paints for a living. Okay, so each one of these is going to get the same amount of golden autumn brown. I'm going to put a half. This is just a cheapy little paring knife. Our little uh, our grocery store had a dollar deal where they had four of these little tiny knives to the uh, package for a buck. Sure, you'd find something like this at the dollar store invaluable when I'm measuring my stuff out. So each one of these cups has about a half a scoop or a little bit less of golden autumn. Okay, golden autumn. Now, I'm going to make one warmer with the spiced ginger. Means I'm going to take this spiced ginger, add the same amount equivalent of that half scoop to the golden autumn and this should make me a nice bright orange brown like a burnt 
leaf, autumn leaf. We have a color in our land called autumn leaf. Okay, thus the word golden autumn was to try to give our other uh, artists that use our water soluble line a hint. Okay. This one, I'm actually going to make it redder. Even though I'm saying it's kind of red for the family, what if you wanted it redder? What if you really needed a reddish brown? Now, if I was going to truly make a reddish brown, I'd not only add a little bit more red, but knowing me, I'd have to add a little tiny bit of ginger peach so it <coughs> really warms it up. But I'm going to keep this clean. I'm going to do the half scoop of the red plum in the next one so we can make a redder brown. Okay. Then I've got the Belize blue. We like blue. Yes, when you're actually making brown, it's made out of yellow, red, and blue. Our uh, spiced ginger gives us the yellow in the family. The red plum is going to intensify to make more like a, a cinnamon brown. The Belize blue will actually give it, a, and I don't, you don't need much. This one I'm not even going to put half in. This is about a third of that spoon. You don't even need that much. That's going to turn it very burnt umber. And burnt umber is usually mixed with, uh, is it blue and brown? Raw umber, burnt umber. It has ultramarine in it. It's got, a, it's got ultramarine in it. Okay. And then my fourth one here is the straight golden autumn. Okay. Let's get these close-up as I can get on this while we're mixing. And I got my little sticks. Okay, so this first one is the straight golden autumn. Like I said, it is in the reddish brown family. May not need that much more red to make it reddish brown, but I had to pick a place in the middle to give you guys a starting point for mixing, okay? So it's still like a warmer brown, warmer in the red family. Now this one has the spiced ginger. This is going to make it more of an orangey brown. As a matter of fact, if you added interference gold to this, you'd almost get to a walnut. If you can see the difference in here in the cup, it looks like the autumn flame in the primer elements. Okay, this is, now I'm going to probably add a little resin to all of these because I short poured them a little bit just to make sure I can mix them. This is that little bit of blue mixed with it. Look what happens. I get a really deep, almost taupey brown. Yet I see all the red in there. Like I said, my instinct is to add a little bit more of the spice ginger and the blue. And I want to do that, so I'm going to do that right now. I think it's still the blue was too dominant. It took it darker, but there wasn't enough warmth in it because this is a red brown to begin with. The golden autumn is a red brown. So to get like that dark, chestnutty brown. I don't want too much orange in there. I'm trying to take it darker. I'm just going to add just a teeny pinch like I did in the Belize Blue. See if I can't get... Oh yeah. Okay, and then the straight... Is this the straight Golden Autumn? Oh no, this is the one with the extra red in it. And it really is a cinnamon brown. Okay, so this is the straight golden autumn. The one with the Belize blue and... I can still see some of Belize blue around the edges. And some of the um, orange added to it. You're getting more of a taupey brown. A, a pecan, like the color of a pecan. Exterior. I am going to add just a teeny bit more resin to these cups because I think the color is a little bit heavy. 
and I want you to see the true nuance as if you guys were mixing them. Oh yeah, that's a little bit better. Whew, pretty color. This is the regular Golden Autumn. It is a reddish brown. This is the Golden Autumn mixed with extra red plum. Very much a cinnamon brown. And this is kind of my taupey burnt umber color. Uh, let me give this uh, tile a little bit of wipe down with some alcohol. Kind of got it dirty with all the color mixing on the top of it. Okay. So I think I'll do the same thing. I'm going to put the lightest color over here. This is the Golden Autumn mixed with the Spice Ginger. This is the Golden Autumn mixed with a little bit more red to make like a cinnamon brown. This is that little bit of Belize Blue and a pinch of the Spice Ginger to kind of bring it back to center. And that's kind of that taupey brown. All that red is pretty much out of it. Most of the red other than what you need. And this is the straight up Golden Autumn as is. Out of it. Now, next to each other, these might look similar, but on my camera here, this is much redder. I can tell that this has red, the red plum in it. Okay. So, one more time. Let's get this camera out a bit. And my tile that's drying, the tile I just did, is a little bit too close. Give me a second. I'm going to add some of the stone coat black. Oh, I didn't put any clear down. Oops. Let's see how this works. I'm going to add some stone coat black over here where the spice ginger has something to go over the top and create cells. I'm going to add some of this aluminite white over here. I have to make up my spaces. I didn't lubricate. It's the one thing about a real hard surface, any surface actually, clear, a little clear resin down helps to guide the path of the resin. So I'm kind of making up for my mistake here. Who knows, maybe this will add a special effect that we want because adding the clear on top of Colors Already Down adds a special effect anyway. I love whether it's Underneath it helps it glide. On top it actually adds some texture. So hey, I'm going to go with the flow here. I guess I was meant to uh, miss this. <laughs> Happy accident. Yay. Make sure all the holes are filled in. And let's add a little black kind of down here like I did on the other tile to make it interesting. Make sure that white's all the way out to the edges. I'm already liking what's happening right here, and we haven't even done anything yet. Wow. I'm not sure if you guys can see this. I haven't swiped or done anything. But by dropping that clear on top, can you see the extra texture in that kind of coffee brown I made. The extra texture in this warmer brown that I made. 
Okay, well, we're going to have to move this stuff around, but I wanted to just point that out to you. That's one thing that's really cool about playing with resin on top of resin. do with some swiping. Actually, I think I'm going to keep swiping over here and maybe some of that warmer color. Yes, it did. It transferred. That's pretty cool. I've never done that before. Picked up the paper and kept swiping somewhere else. I'm going to swipe this white, some of this white, get full contact with the white. That's that aluminite, aluminite. Looks like I have an awful lot of luminite there. I'm kind of liking what's happening here. Interesting that those reds look really red now against the other browns. It's against that kind of coffee color that we made. Now remember, this coffee color was made with a pinch of police blue, a pinch of spiced ginger, and the golden autumn. Okay, this warmer color, but was very obvious by adding the spiced ginger. Actually, I am liking what's happening right here, and I don't know if the camera's going to pick that up. Goodness. Where I re, re swiped and I already had color on top, I'm getting some very interesting red brown lacing and coffee lacing pushing up through that uh, warmer brown that I made with the spiced ginger. Wow, that's pretty interesting. Those colors are kind of the bomb, man. So I'm looking around here to see if I have just a little itty bitty piece that I can um, play on. Give me one second. So normally I'm not working on something this tiny. I like big stuff. Let's see how far out I can get this. So I've got those colors that I mixed up. This is the straight mermaid, the mermaid with the green, the mermaid with the blue. I've got my browns that I mixed over here. I got my black and my white. So first I'm going to lubricate this with some clear. By the way, this is just raw canvas. No, I did not prep it. I did not do anything to it. It's so tiny. Let's hope it's not that affected by it. I really need to clean these off, but these are my little silicone scrapers that will spread the resin and the resin comes right off. It does it does peel right off. I just apologizing it still has resin from the last time I used it. So my clear is evenly spread. I 
This is that lighter teal. This is that bluer teal. No, I was going to do monochromatic top and bottom, but I think I'm going to change my mind. This is the straight mermaid. I kind of want to have it go in this way. This is that more warmer orange brown that we made with a little bit of spiced ginger in it. There's a little black here for effects. I'm putting the black closest to the lighter value colors because that's where we're going to get cells going over the black and light colors against the black, of course, are going to look great. I've got some of this aluminite white over here. Okay, this is my, um, okay, that's blue. I want some more orange. I'm looking, I'm talking in my mind of what complements. Blue is complemented by orange, warmer colors. This is the Golden Autumn. Wow. Holy moly, I don't know if you can see that. I think that's the Golden Autumn mixed with some of the red. Because boy, that is really super striking in person here. This vein right here is kind of crazy. It's really, really bright in person. Okay, now I'm risking getting too busy with this thing, but I want to make sure we got enough resin to cover it all. Enough room for everything to be blown around like it should be. I'm going to bring some of this warmer brown, that golden autumn mixed with the spiced ginger up here, just a little vein, because it'll kind of play as a gold in my piece since we don't have gold. That's going to be my lightest value. And here's some of that straight mermaid. Okay, so I will put a little white right here so we've got some coverage. We've got some white right here. And then I'm going to dribble, like I did on my other pieces, just a vein of the black throughout the whole thing to kind of give it a little something, something. Oops. Now I'm getting messy. <laughs> but this is my uh, leftovers for my experiment. Don't want to waste them. contact and pull it right over the top of this black in the corner. Kind of 
like in this color as it came off. I'm going to just push that into the white. I don't know what that's going to do, but hey, I don't want to waste it. I'm loving almost a rainbow effect happening here. That's really pretty. Okay, so I'm going to do a little mini partial swipe here. I've made full contact and I'm kind of going to go into here. Full contact. I'm kind of just like winging it now, guys. I'm going to go into that black. I'm pushing it into the black because that's where you get your effects. Those turquoises and browns are so pretty together. Oh my gosh. I mean, in theory, they're supposed to go together. Turquoise and orange browns are like the perfect complement to one another. That's probably why Autumn Leaf and Teal Zircon and the Primary Element line and our watercolor lines have been the most popular colors, hands down, in the history of the company because turquoise and like warm, yummy, orangey browns are stunning. So that's kind of another swipe. Wow. This is a little itty bitty piece, but I am sure loving this color combination. Holy moly. This would be a great test to say, what am I gonna do on a large canvas? Can you see this? I'm even liking how that black and white did its thing. I really don't wanna change that. I mean, that white right there kind of bugs me, but I don't want to mess with that lacing right there. Maybe what I can do is just move. There we go. Just so it looks like it belongs. I don't really want to blow it and mess this up. We're getting some crazy cells here. Crazy. Unbelievable. Well, I, I kind of like this little itty bitty piece. This was fun. It was good for me. I needed to get back and play because I haven't done anything. For, it seems like forever. I'm uh, I've been pretty, pretty bugged out, laying in bed, not feeling well. Wishing I could. Now play with the resin and work with you guys. So I hope you have enjoyed this little segment. We have, oops, I don't really want to pick that up right now until I move it to the chamber because it's still very, very soupy and it's still making cells. Uh, so what I'll do is I'm going to show you that tile. Beautiful texture we're getting on that one. Show you the other tile. We lost some of our patterns and yet some of them are very subtle. I'm liking the color combination in there, but I think I kind of lost it because I got it too hot. This is actually pretty darn amazing for a little bitty test on a tiny little canvas. So thanks for joining me, guys. Have a great day. See you soon. Bye-bye. So here is a close-up with my iPhone. I'm loving that warmer 
brown next to the darker browns. Beautiful lacing. Very, very sparkly colors. You can see how that reddish brown is popping through the teal. This turned out very nice for a tiny little piece. I'm very happy. I want to use this color combination again in a bigger piece. Hope you enjoyed, guys. Thank you. Bye-bye.